This is Colin Selig of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on conservation of momentum for planar kinetics. It's from chapter 19.3 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's objectives, you will be able to understand the conditions for the conservation of linear and angular momentum and use the condition of conservation of linear and angular momentum. Activities include some applications, will define the conservation of linear and angular momentum, and will do some problem solving. So here we see an ice skater. She spends a lot of time either spinning on the ice or rotating through the air. To spin fast or for a very long time, the skater must develop a large amount of angular momentum. If the skater's angular momentum is constant, can the skater vary her rotational speed? How? So let's go back to the definition of momentum of inertia. It's equal to the integral of r squared dm, where dm is this little element here, and r is the distance away from the point you want the angular momentum about. What the skater's doing, initially her arms are outstretched and she's spinning around you know, this axis. In the second position, she brings her arms in. And as she does that, of course, she's bringing in some mass closer to the center of her body. And when she does that, the moment of inertia goes down. And if momentum is conserved, you know that the moment of inertia at state 1 times omega is equal to the moment of inertia at state 2 times omega 2. So if this number goes down and this stays constant, then omega 2 has to go up. Okay, let's recall the linear impulse and momentum relationship. Uh, it's the mass times the velocity of the mass center at state 1 plus the sum of the integral of the forces integrated over time. It's equal to the mass times the velocity of the mass center at state 2. Well, what we're going to say, if all the linear impulses are 0, then momentum must be conserved. So we can say that the mass times the velocity of mass center at 1 is equal to the mass times the velocity of mass center at 2. This equation is referred to as a conservation of linear momentum. It can be used if the linear impulses, that's the second term right here, are small and can be neglected. Now let's talk about the conservation of angular momentum. That equation from the last chapter was the moment of inertia about the mass center times omega at state 1 plus the sum of the integrals of the moments about the mass center integrated over time is equal to the mass moment of inertia of the mass center times omega 2. Well, if we're going to say that the moments are zero, then angular momentum is going to be conserved. So, angular momentum is conserved for both states. This equation is referred to as the conservation of angular momentum. If the initial condition of the rigid body or system is known, conservation of the momentum is often used to determine the final linear or angular velocity of a body just after an event occurs. So let's establish a procedure for analysis. First is always establish an XYZ coordinate system and draw free body diagrams. Write the conservation of linear momentum equation. Write the conservation of angular momentum equation about a fixed point or about the mass center G. Solve the conservation of linear or angular momentum equations in the appropriate directions. If the motion is complicated, use of kinematic equations relating the velocity of the mass center and the angular velocity omega may be necessary. So let's do an example. Here we have a 10 kilogram wheel. Moment of inertia about g is 0 0.156 kilogram meters squared. It rolls without slipping, and when it hits this point A, it does not rebound. Find the minimum velocity, v sub g, the wheel must have to just roll over the obstruction at A. So since no slipping or rebounding occurs, the wheel pivots about point A. The force at A is much, much greater than the weight, and since the time of impact is very short, we're going to consider the weight as non-impulsive. The reaction force at A, that's a problem. We don't know its direction or its magnitude. But this force can be eliminated by applying the conservation of angular momentum equation about the point A. Okay, the first step of the procedure is to draw the impulse momentum diagram and establish the coordinate system. So here's our xy axes. Uh, initially, the center of the wheel has some velocity vg sub 1, which you can see here, and it has some angular momentum ig omega 1 about g. 
and this is just when it hits the obstruction. So right when it hits the obstruction, the impulsive force F is shown at the point A, and the weight is shown as well. But since the time is so short and the weight is very small compared to F, we're going to ignore the impulse due to the weight. So that equals to the momentum at the second stage, which you see here. So now we have a new velocity, Vg sub 2. And since it pivots about point A, that is a right angle. And we have the new omega 2. So as I said earlier, the wheel is pivoting about point A. So I'm going to say the angular momentum is conserved about A. So that means that angular momentum about A at state 1 is equal to angular momentum about A at state 2. Now remember the equation for the angular momentum about a point other than the mass center is Ig omega plus the mass times the velocity of the mass center times d, where d is the perpendicular distance between a and the velocity of g vector. So at state 1, I have moment of inertia about g times omega 1 plus the mass times the velocity of the mass center times the perpendicular distance between a and this vector right here, which is this r prime vector right there. This is times r prime. So that equals to the angular momentum at state 2 which is mass moment of inertia about g times v omega at 2 plus. Now in this case, this second case here, the velocity vector is in that direction. As I said earlier, this is a right angle, so d in this case is 0.2. So it's the mass times the velocity of the mass center at state 2 times r right here. So let's fill in those numbers. i about g is 0 0.156 omega 1 plus the mass, which is 10, times the velocity of the mass center, times r prime, which is 0 0.2 minus 0 0.03. That equals to moment of inertia about g, 0 0.156 times omega 2, plus the mass of the wheel is 10, the velocity of the mass center at state 2 is unknown, times r, which is 0 0.2. Now we have four unknowns here, omega 1, the velocity of the mass center at state 1, omega 2, and the velocity of the mass center at state 2. However, from kinematics, we know that the velocity of the mass center is r times omega. So that means that the velocity of the mass center at state 1 is equal to 0 0.2 omega 1, and the velocity of the mass center at state 2 is equal to 0 0.2 times omega 2. So we make those substitutions into this equation right here. We find that the velocity of the mass center at state 2 is equal to 0 0.892 velocity of the mass center at state 1. So there's one equation. So let's write that down so we don't forget. The velocity of the mass center at state 1 is equal to 0 0.892 velocity of the mass center at state 2. That's equation 1. Now we're going to go to another state. We're going to go from state 2, where the wheel has just impacted the obstruction and the impact is passed, to a new state 3, where it's just about to roll over the obstruction at A. So we have a state 2 and a state 3. So we can use conservation of energy to solve this problem, because now we know that the mass center has some velocity and the wheel has some omega at state 2. And we can relate that to the energy at state 3. So in order for this to roll over the obstruction, the wheel must go from state 2 to state 3. And for the velocity of the mass center at state 2 to be a minimum, the velocity of the mass at state 3 is going to be equal to 0. That means it's just going to get over the obstruction, which is what we were asked for. So I'm going to use the conservation of energy equation here. So T2 plus V2 is equal to T3 plus V3. Now I'm going to put my datum here that goes to the mass center at state 2. So the potential energy at state 2 is 0. And as I said, the velocity of mass center at state 3 is going to be equal to 0. So therefore, omega at state 3 is also 0. So the kinetic energy at state 3 is 0. So basically, T2 is equal to V3. So T2 is, that equation is 1 half the mass times the velocity of the mass center at state 2 squared plus 1 half mass moment of inertia about G times omega 2 squared. And V2, that's the potential energy gained when it raises, when the mass center goes up by 0 0.3 meters. So that is equal to the mass times G times 0 0.03. So let's fill in the numbers. 
T2 is 1 half times the mass, which is 10 times the velocity. The mass center in state 2 squared plus 1 half moment of inertia is 0 0.156 times omega 2 squared. That is equal to mg delta h, so it's 10 times 9.81 times the amount the mass center raises, which is 0 0.03 meters. Well, we know that the velocity of the mass center at state 2 is equal to the radius of the wheel, which is 0 0.2 times omega 2. We'll call that equation 2. In this equation 3, we can substitute in 1 and 2 into equation 3 and solve for the velocity of the mass center at state 1. It's equal to 0 0.729 meters per second. Here's another problem. A 150 pound man leaps off the circular platform with a velocity of 5 feet per second relative to the platform. So the velocity of the man with respect to the platform is 5 feet per second. Initially, the man and the platform were, were at rest. The platform weighs 300 pounds. Find the angular velocity of the platform after the man leaps off. So we can apply the relative velocity equation to find the relationship between the velocities of the man and the platform. And then we can use the conservation of angular momentum to find the angular velocity of the platform. And we're going to apply that to the total system of the man and the platform. So any forces the man puts on the platform are internal to the system. Now since the platform rotates about a fixed axis here at point O, the speed of the point P on the platform for which the man leaps can be written. We say the velocity of point P is equal to r omega. Now note that omega is clockwise here, so if I'm going to say that up is positive, the velocity of the platform at point P is equal to minus 8 times omega. Remember the man is 8 feet away from the center of the platform. So now I can apply the relative velocity equation. I can say velocity of the man is the velocity of the platform plus the velocity of the man with respect to the platform. If I know what velocity the platform is, it's minus 8 omega, and this term was given as 5 feet per second. So I can say the velocity of the man is minus 8 omega plus 5. So that's one equation. So let's write that down. Velocity of the man is minus 8 omega plus 5. So now we're going to apply the conservation of angular momentum of this system. And any forces that the man generates on the platform is going to be internal to the system of the man and the platform. So I can say that for the system, the angular momentum about the center conserved. So we were told the system starts from rest, so the initial angular momentum is zero. So the initial angular momentum is zero, like I said. Now the angular momentum due to the man at state two, well here's his velocity vector, and remember h about o is m times the velocity, the mass center, times perpendicular distance plus ig omega. So the mass is not rotating, so he just has this component. So it's his mass, which is 150, or 32.2, times the velocity of the man, times his distance from the center, which is 8. Now I'm saying that counterclockwise is positive, so this term is positive, because his velocity vector times perpendicular distance is in the positive direction. Now the angular momentum of the platform, Omega is opposite my assumed positive direction, so this term is going to be negative, so it's minus i of the platform times omega. Now i of the platform, this is a disk, so it's one half mr squared, so it's one half the mass, which is 300 pounds, over 32.2 times the radius squared, which is 10 squared. So this is 465.8 slug foot squared. So this is equation one, this is equation two. I can rewrite equation two as the velocity of the man is equal to 12.5 omega. It's equation three. I can solve equations one and three simultaneously and get the velocity of the man is 3.05 feet per second and omega is 0 0.244 radians per second. This concludes chapter 19.3, Conservation of Momentum for Planar Kinetics. This is the last video lecture in this series.